Hello, and welcome back to our advanced squad leader tutorial series. In our recent videos, we have been dealing with vehicles, passengers, riders, and crews. In this video, we are going to deal with radialless AFVs on platoon movement. But first, I have a follow-up to our last video with regards to the Americans using assault fire in combination with their half-track. I did some research and asked the experts. The video is correct, with the 667 and the medium machine gun from the half-track holding 11 in the advanced fire phase. If the advanced fire value of an assault capable squad results in a fraction, the fraction is rounded up to the next whole number and then one is added. So if the advanced fire value of the 667 was somehow 6.5, it would be, be rounded up to a 7 and then have one added for a total of 8. Adding the 8 to the 4 medium machine gun would give you the 12. Because the advanced fire value of the 667 is a 6, the 6 is raised to a 7. 7 plus 4 for the machine gun and the half track makes it 11, which does not make the 12 column. So the shot is on the 8 column with a plus 2 DRM for the wooden building. Feel free to ask questions at any time about anything we cover, or if there's a topic you would like to go over, let me know. In this video, we are going to deal with the radialless AFVs and the use of platoon movement. In general, radialless AFVs occur during the early war scenarios. You can tell if an AFV has no radio by looking at the wreck side of the counter. If you see an R in a circle, that means this AFV has no radio. This T-34M41 is radioless, but the asterisk means something special. In this case, it means that this tank gets a radio in any scenario from January 1943 on. Our present scenario is taking place in August 1941, so this vehicle has no radio. First, let's try to move one of these tanks by themselves. First, you have to roll a task check based on the morale of the crew. The Russian player has to roll an 8 or less to try to start the vehicle, because the morale of Russian crews is an 8. The crews of the nationality in play take the morale of the elite units for that nationality. Once he has done that, then the tank has to pass a reliability check due to the red numbers in the MP allowance of the tank. If he did all that, then the vehicle can move normally. If the tank is already in motion, when the movement phase starts, he has to pass a morale check of 8 to stay in motion. If he fails it, then the vehicle stops automatically. You can see that lack of radio poses a problem. Now the way to avoid this problem is to move in platoon movement. To do this, we start with three of the T-34 M41 tanks. It is the Russian movement phase. The Russian player decides to move this platoon of three tanks. He announces one to start. He then has to roll a reliability check. If he rolls a 12, then random selection is used to determine which of the T-34M41s has blown its transmission and became immobilized. If he passes the check, then all three tanks start for one. They all move into the next row of hexes for two. The next for three. Now, one of the tanks is going to bypass the house for two MP. All three of the vehicles will spend those two MP. While the one tank is bypassing the house, the other two tanks can turn one hex line, spending those same two move points. Now, the tank that bypassed the house spend its, spends its sixth MP to enter the next hex. The other two tanks spend their sixth MP waiting. Now, for the seventh move point, all the tanks move together again. Then two of the tanks spend an extra MP to turn one hex spine in their, in their hex while the tank that bypassed the house waits. Then finally, all the vehicles spend a ninth MP to enter the next hex, and then all the vehicles spend one MP to stop. Our next example has our tanks on the road, crew exposed, already in motion. They all move one hex on the road for one half movement point. They travel another hex on the road for another half movement point. Now the lead tank has to change covered arc, so all the vehicles spend 1 MP without moving while the lead vehicle changes its covered arc. The trailing tanks can do the same thing. That way, when they enter the next hex, it will only cost them 1 half movement point. Now you can see that platoon movement can be cumbersome. In some instances, it can be advantageous. One major issue is that vehicles using platoon movement cannot use excessive speed attempts. Now obviously we're in a battlefield. So there's a good chance that you're going to take cash leave, and platoon movement handles them differently. It is the Russian movement phase, and the middle tank of the platoon has gotten destroyed from an anti-tank gun. Before the platoon can move, 
they have to reform the platoon. The rear tank moves up into the wreck hex for 2 MP. The other vehicle has to spend the same 2 MP waiting for that tank to reform its platoon. Once tanks are in contact again, the platoon can move off normally. This finishes our video on platoon movement in radioless AFVs. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please remember that this and all my videos are meant to serve as an introduction to give you enough confidence to dive in and have some fun playing this great game. The best way to learn this game is to play and don't worry about making mistakes. Learn from experience, more experienced players and perhaps go to one of the many tournaments around the country, like the New York State ASL Championships in Albany, New York, and the Nor'easter in Boxborough, Massachusetts. If you like this video, please like us on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, thoughts, or suggestions, feel free to contact me at jdhobbies at live.com. And like always, thanks for watching.